What a happy day. Time for a special video. I can't wait. We're just going to get into this. Got a little something from Severin. I could not resist. If you look in the back there, you see the type of films I've been watching recently. You may have an idea of what this is. Packed in peanuts. Let's see if it's we got a box set, I believe. Or maybe it's going to be a few different discs. Nope, all in one set. Let's take a look. Got a little Severin sticker. And I was a little confused here because I had another sticker. Little did I know it's under my thumb, <laughs> but I found it. it. has nothing to do with the topic today, but here it is in a moment. How's everybody doing today? We got the Severn sticker right there, and then lo and behold, right under my thumb was, why not? They had a Fulci sticker. Check that out. We'll just put that aside. Awesome sticker. Here we go. The Game of Clones, Bruce Bloitation Collection, Volume one impossibly limited bonus disc version, uh, which I'll show you. Got two bonus films here, a seven disc collection, 12 restored Bruce, Bruce Bloitation classics, and the documentary Enter the Clones of Bruce. 100 pages of essays, posters, all kinds of stuff. All things Bruce Bloitation. The first thing I'm watching is the documentary, that's for sure. Uh, if you see in the back there, that's the film Dynamo, starring Ho Chin Tao, Bruce Lee, L.I., or Bruce Lai, as we used to say. So that will be my uh, next review for Martial Arts Monday. So I'm already into this Bruce Bloitation journey. And I did have a video a while back which introduced the topic of Bruce Bloitation. So please go back and check that out. And there you see on the sticker there, the two bonuses are The Big Boss 2 and The Black Dragon versus The Yellow Tiger. Looking forward to those. Looking forward to everything. Love the artwork here. And the fact that this is volume one is pretty fascinating. And you know, overall, the Bruce exploitation genre is a mixed bag, of course, uh, in terms of quality. But uh, there's a lot of good ones out there, and some of them deserve uh, better transfers than we've gotten. All right, let's get this opened up. See what we've got inside. We've got a pretty substantial booklet for sure. There's the back. Lots of yellow track suits and nunchucks, for sure. You're going to get that. <laughs> all right, first of all, we've got the documentary. There's Ho Chin Tao right there, Bruce Lee, L.I. That's him right there in the movie Dynamo. Enter the Clones of Bruce Lee. Look at all those special features where they interview a lot of the, the heir appearance to Bruce Lee, Dragon Lee, Ho Chin Tao, uh, Bruce Lee, L.E., uh, so it'll be fascinating to hear what they have to say. And we have the, the movie, The Clones of Bruce Lee, and then enter Three Dragons. It does get complicated. You know, they're, they're, you, it, a lot of the same keywords are used again and again in these movies. Uh, then you have Enter the Game of Death, and Goodbye Bruce Lee, his last game of death. Rarely are these movies longer than 90 minutes. Yeah, I don't remember either one of those. The Dragon Lives Again. And what else do we have there? Bruce Lee and the Iron... Bruce and the Iron Finger. I believe I have that one. If it if it's the one I'm thinking of, it also goes under a different title. There's a guy with vampire teeth. I'm not sure what that's about. Sometimes they threw, like, the kitchen sink in some of these movies. Challenge of the Tiger and the Cameroon Connection. That's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, that's Bruce Lee, L.E., right there. To be honest, I, I'm still a little bit confused about Bruce Liang and Bruce Lee, L.E. Super Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. And what else do we have here? The, is it The Dragon Lives? Let me say, yep, The Dragon Lives. All new action. <laughs> Looks like Jimmy Wang Yu is in the first one there. That, you know, he's... He's obviously a powerhouse in the martial arts world. The Dragon, the Hero, and Rage of the Dragon. Now, that's the one with Dragon Lee. I've begun to, I've actually started to like him a lot. You know, he, he, he really looked pretty good. Uh, Korean actor, by the way. Pretty muscle-bound. Now, check this out. This, unfortunately, got a little damaged. It's just a paper sleeve. It's almost like a secret compartment. You wouldn't even know it was there. 
So that's where the bonus goes. But here are the two bonus movies. And uh, when I decided to put the disc back, I just left it out of the paper sleeve. There you have those two bonus movies I talked about. The Big Boss and what was it? The Black Dragon and the Yellow Tiger. So yeah, you know, it, it, it's not just... You know, they're also imitating or, or taking cues from Bruce Lee's movies. So you often see characters that are clones of Jim Kelly's character, too. Um, which is, in a way, kind of cool. I mean, it gave some people some work. Uh, yeah, look at all these posters. Some of them really, you know, were kind of exploitative. Uh, <laughs> the Bruce... The Bruce Clone Connection by Michael Wirth. I've been mentioning his name on the channel a lot lately. He's done, he does a lot of the uh, audio commentary on the Pearl River movies that I've reviewed so far. Or actually, by the time you see this, I will have done the first one. And actually, there's a poster of it in here. The Leg Fighters is in here. Uh, the Dragon Dies Hard. The Leg Fighters, there it is. And then, of course, the next one will be um, Dynamo. Bruce Lee and I, that's L-I. How the Man in the Myth Saved My Kung Fu Childhood. Man, I can't wait to read that because I can relate to that because he was the man. For me, there he is in old age with Michael Wirth. Older age, there he is with a smile on his face. That's good. Because, you know, he had some some problems sort of escaping the the label that was put on him, you know. Uh, but, man, growing up, his movies, if one of his movies came on Saturday afternoon on Kung Fu Theater, like The Three Avengers... Man, I was all set. I loved that guy. I thought he was really good. I thought he was a good actor. And uh, I can't wait to get into this whole set. Okay, in just a moment, I have a review of the documentary itself. What's up, guys? It is now the morning after, and I have watched the documentary Enter the Clones of Bruce, and then I rewatched this morning with commentary. And you might think, well, a documentary with commentary, like, what else are they going to say? It's a documentary, after all, but they talked about the, uh, the, the efforts involved in making this were, were pretty, pretty intense. I mean, you had to coordinate a lot of interviews, uh, travel to a lot of different countries, France, Germany, the United States, South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, multiple times, and try to interview people, many of whom were kind of reluctant to appear on camera. And, you know, a lot of these guys have kind of they stepped away from this, the business and uh, sort of, you know, they've got their own identity now. So they didn't really, they were hesitant to go on camera. Uh, nevertheless, the four principal people that they interview, the successors or clones, if you will, imitators, are Bruce Lai, uh, Ho Jintao. They interviewed him in uh, Taiwan. Uh, Bruce Liang, Bruce Lei, that's L-E, and uh, Dragon Lee in South Korea. Uh, so they, also, they were also able to secure an interview with Casanova Wong when they were in South Korea, which is pretty cool. Uh, and it's actually kind of cool because you could see that like Dragon Lee and uh, Bruce Liang, they actually show their knuckles as they're being interviewed. Their knuckles are like, you know, just like totally calloused over. Uh, you can tell these guys have punched a lot of things. So these guys are, were really actually legitimate martial artists, you know. Um, uh, Bruce Lai talks about seeing the Green Hornet on TV and recognizing that, that Bruce Lee was like, you know, fluid. And he talked about how in a lot of movies people would just like punch and shoot their arms out and not like, use their whole core. Uh, so he recognized that and kind of talks about how he kind of enjoyed trying to imitate that style, but he didn't really like taking the name. He was never comfortable with that. And a lot of these guys really kind of were exploited. You know, producers would take footage that they shot and unbeknownst to them, put it in another movie. So a lot of them really have no idea how many movies they've appeared in. <laughs> and they didn't get any money for that either. They, you know, they would be paid once for footage that was used in three different movies or something like that. Um, just a fascinating documentary overall. I think the, the core of it, the most bittersweet part, is probably the interview with uh, Bruce Lai in Taiwan. So he does, you know, he stepped away from the business, uh, had a personal tragedy kind of had to recover from that and he's gone into like uh, medicine and he trains people in Taiwan for free I think and you see a little bit of that in the film so he seems very happy now so that makes me happy to know that he's a happy guy because he was really one of my favorite people to watch on Kung Fu Theater as I have said uh, but 
Overall, it's an excellent documentary, well made. The opening titles are fantastic after the, about a 10 minute intro. Uh, the interviews are great. When they went to Hong Kong, apparently, it was very hard to book interviews ahead of time because of everybody's schedule. So they just tried to get anyone they could while they were there, and they did a pretty good job. They got Godfrey Ho and Mars, uh, Philip Ko, Lee, uh, Lee So Nam, uh, Sam O Hung, Yusaka Karata, uh, Angela Mao in the United States. And you know, some of the, Angela Mao hasn't been on camera that much at all, so that was pretty cool. Uh, they also talk about how like the distributors really had a role in these films and like in uh, the Bruce Bluetation genre as a whole owes a lot to uh, France. So apparently France was an integral part of the genre and it looks like Bruce Lay actually did a lot of work with them. Uh, and it was actually a distributor who took a Yusaka Karate movie and said, hey, we're gonna make you Bruce Lowe. There's been a Lee, there's been a Lai, there's been a Lay, but there hasn't been a Lowe. So for one movie, he was Bruce Lowe. <laughs> um, but you know, that didn't become his whole identity in his career the way it did for some of these other guys. Uh, overall, just really fascinating interviews. Um, they talked about how they tried to get Jackie Chan, but they couldn't get, they couldn't get him in the documentary. Um, same thing with Bolo Young. They, they just couldn't make it work so they could sit down with him, but they did interview his son a little bit. They did interview Sam O'Hung, who, you know, he made a movie called Enter the Fat Dragon, which was like a comedy takeoff of Enter the Dragon, which I really have to see now. Apparently he's very proud of that, which is interesting. Of course, he was able to establish his own career and identity, as was Jackie Chan, who appeared in a Fist of Fury sequel. Apparently he's not thrilled about that, but nevertheless, he was able to also, of course, as you know, establish his own identity with more comedy. Uh, apparently one of the interesting things that happened with Dragon Lee was that a lot of his films started to become more like comedies as time went on. Uh, overall, just a fascinating documentary. Highly recommend it if you're interested in martial arts films. Even if you're not big into the Bruce Bluetation films themselves as a documentary, this is, is it's very solid, very solid and well made. And that is my review. Highly recommend it. Have you seen it? Are you planning on seeing this documentary? Have you heard of it? Let me know in the comments below.